I think before we talk about scaling a business, the first question that any entrepreneur should ask themselves is why do they want to scale? Because sometimes they think if I want to make more money, I need to scale. Well, may may not be the case because I do know companies, they make tens of millions of dollars. A friend of mine who is a company that makes over $50 million a year, yet their net is less than like 100K a year, right? So bigger is not always better. Uh, better is better. So the, the point of scale, of course, is to make more profit, but not every business is meant to scale. And it depends on the entrepreneur's goal, the CEO's goal. Sometimes as an entrepreneur, maybe your goal is just to have a, a lifestyle business, right? Have a laptop lifestyle. Hey, you know what? I just want to make a couple hundred K a year. I want to be able to travel. I want to have the, to be a lifestyle entrepreneur. Then, then don't scale if that's all you want, right? So if it is what you want, then you need to consider I'm scaling for what purpose? Why am I doing it? If you just do it for the sake of, I want to make more money, I don't think that's a good enough reason to scale. If you want to scale because, you know what, I need to have more capital so I can have better infrastructure, I can reach more people, I could serve more people, or I need that into scale to, in order to to invest in better technology, so to turn whatever I do, take it to the next step. I think those are all good reasons to scale, but just scaling for the sake of scaling, I think that's a, a wrong focus, that's a mistake. So in order to scale, I think the first thing they need to look for is there needs to be margin in order to scale, right? So the example I gave, if the business is making 50 million, that's a lot of money, and making 100K net, right a year so if you double that to a hundred million great now they're making 200k a year that is not so good and in order to get to the next level how many more employees they need to hire how maybe they need a new office they need more equipment or whatever it is so the margin has to be there in order to to scale now if let's say you are selling a 20 dollar product because most businesses they only have they're what i call one product pony They've only got one product. Let's say pretend you have a product, you're selling it for $30, okay? And your cost is, let's say, five bucks. You're making $25 profit per unit. Well, to scale, say, let's say pretend an online business, uh, some kind of product you sell through e-commerce, you could, the most that you could invest to acquire a customer is $25 because that's your profit margin. So if you think about each sale that you make, you can spend no more than $25 to acquire a customer because $5 is your cost. Then you could only go to so many channels or utilize so many ways to, to acquire that particular customer. Versus on the other hand, and especially if you only got one product, meaning they buy that once and they don't have to buy again. That means you have to constantly market and get new people all the time. Now, let's take a look at a different scenario. Let's say you've got not one product, but you've got a product line, or you've got what I call different backend products that you sell to the same customer. And let's say instead of selling low ticket, you're selling a high ticket. That's why I like high ticket, right? You're selling a, a, a $2,000 product, and then you sell them another you know, $5,000 product, and then sell them another $10,000 product or program. So in that case, let's say on average, your annual, value of a customer is instead of being $25 one time, but it's $10,000, okay? So you have a percentage of the customers, they will buy the $2,000 program, they buy the $5,000 program, they buy the $10,000 product. Let's say hypothetical, let's say that's the case. Now, it's a very different game. Instead of you could only spend $25 to acquire a customer, now I could spend $500, $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, depends on the lifetime value of the customer. I may be, if my lifetime value of the customer, meaning they stay with me two, three, five, six, ten 10 years, hypothetically, that first year, I could spend up to, let's say even five, six, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000. That gives me an edge over someone who can only spend twenty five. dollars See, when it comes to marketing, because most entrepreneurs, business owners, they, when it comes to marketing, they want to go on the cheap. They want to, how can I spend the least amount of money to acquire that customer? That kind of thinking, that kind of mentality, you will never be able to scale. In order to scale, the question to ask is not, how can I spend the least? 
The question to ask is, how can I outspend everybody else? How can I outspend my competitors? If my competitors can only spend $200 to acquire a customer and I can spend $2,000, I could go to so many more channels. I could do so many more things. I can test so many different traffic sources in order to scale. That gives me way more options, and that's how I can scale fast. I can go through, I can use this channel, I can use this channel, I can use this platform, I can do offline. When my competitor cannot afford to go offline, do any kind of offline marketing, I could, because the lifetime value of my customer is high. Assuming that you've got your offers, you've got your product line, and assuming, let's say, you're selling high ticket, and you've got your marketing dialed in, you've got your traffic sources, maybe you're running ads on Facebook, maybe you're running ads on Instagram, maybe you are uh, you're running ads on Google, whatever how many different ways you're, you're bringing in the leads, right? What happens is, let's say you're bringing a lot of leads, your next bottleneck would be closers. Where do you find enough closers to be on the phone? Because when it comes to high ticket, anything that costs, let's say more than two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, it's very difficult to sell that just on a web page or through a video. You need someone to get on the phone one-on-one -on -one and close that particular prospect. In order to do that, you need people. So where do you find those closers? So in my case, within what we do, my, my, our organization is, we have now probably close to 100 closers closing our own program and product, right? That's how we are able to scale quick because we have the, the power, right? The people, the closers, to be able to close people on the phone and take it much, much faster, much, much further. And most entrepreneurs is when they do the marketing and they're scaling the marketing, then they're like, oh my God, shit, I need some closers. And they try to bring on one person and it doesn't quite work. And then try to bring on another person, it doesn't quite, they're not a salespeople, it doesn't quite work. They might try to run an ad and it doesn't quite work. And then they finally find someone that works, but then that person, you fill up his or her appointment book so fast and now they gotta now spend another months to find another person in order to scale versus how they have access to so many closers. So you need closers before you even scale, right? So that when you are in a position to ramp up your marketing, you're good to go. Versus you try to ramp up your marketing, you got to slow it down because you don't have enough people to handle the leads. And every single time you do that, that delay, that time, that delay, it, it's, that's what's preventing you from scaling to the next level. So let's say you have a Facebook ad that's working, that's like great, a webinar that's working, that's, that's producing leads. But because you don't have enough people to follow up on those leads, you have to you know, lower the budget or you have to pause the ad, that's the worst, right? When you've got something that's working, and then now you gotta go find a person. It's like you have so many leads coming in, you can't handle their business. So you gotta look at two aspects. One is the lead flow, the second is your fulfillment. So in order to scale, if the fulfillment aspect where if you are selling something like a, something that takes a long time to make, then it's gonna be, let's say a sofa or something, right? It's gonna be difficult to scale because let's say if it's handmade or whatever, it's just difficult. Versus if you're selling a software, doesn't matter if I sell one, doesn't matter if I sell 500, doesn't matter if I sell 50,000. I can scale just like that. Yes, I need more customer support, I need more infrastructure, correct. But the product itself, it's basically infinite. That aspect of fulfillment, it's easier to scale. So if you look at it that, that way, lead flow, closers, and then your fulfillment. Assuming you've got the fulfillment done and, and that's okay, and you can, you, can, you can serve a lot of people doing the same thing, then it's just in terms of traffic source and then in terms of closers. So you wanna find closers when you don't need closers. You don't need to find closers when you need closers like yesterday, that's not good. And the biggest problem is this, you are not going to find the salespeople that you want the traditional way, because I've tried it, right? If you want to find salespeople, maybe you go to uh, any of these sites, right? Any of these Craigslist or whatever, you're running an ad, hey, I'm looking for salespeople. The problem is, any good salespeople that are looking for a job, they're not good salespeople. If they're good salespeople, they won't be looking for a job. Because any good salespeople, they're already making good money and they're making good commissions, they're not looking for jobs. That's number one. Number two, if you hire a salesperson very often, and I tried this before myself, that I pay them some kind of a base, right? And then I pay them some kind of bonus, they can't close. 
because any good salespeople is like a hunter. You eat what you kill, yet if you give them a base, you give them all of that, that they are not hungry, right? And, and most salespeople, they, they want to see, they, although they're supposed to be salespeople, they're supposed to be hunters, but they want the security and they can't close. They become a typical, like a salary uh, person within the company, and then they're not motivated to bring in sales. So I believe a good closer needs to be commission-based. The more, the more they close, the more sales they make, the more money they make. That's how it should, it should be. There's no sky to the sky's the limit. They can make as much money as, you, as they want. They can sell, if they can, they're able to sell higher price point, high ticket, awesome, right? So you're not gonna find those salespeople traditional way, just won't, right? And another thing is, if, let's say you do find that superstar, which it also happened to me, you do find that superstar, and that salesperson is producing a lot of sales. That salesperson becomes your rainmaker. Let's say you're, whatever, you, you are doing a million a year, and that salesperson brings in three, four hundred K worth of revenue for the company. Well, what happens is the salesperson would then either become greedy, they say, I want more, or they would jump ship. And then they'll go work for someone, your competitor maybe, that would pay them a higher commission rate. And that happens too. So you want, always want to have more than one closer, uh, even though you might just need one to scale, but you kind of want to have multiple. So then if one leaves, you're okay, you're fine. Right? When we have a hundred closers working with us, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. If, if one doesn't work, we have 99 to replace that particular person. There are so many sales trainers out there and there are so many experts teaching sales and most of them are very, very good, right? I just happen to specialize in one area of sales, right? That, which is high ticket closing, high ticket sales. If you want to learn cold calling, I'm not the guy to, to, to learn from. There are plenty of people who are, who are better at cold calling than, than I do, right? I teach a little bit of cold calling to my students, but that's not what I specialize in. I specialize in selling premium products and services to players with money, right? So that's what I do. And when it comes to my methodology, so it works very well in my area, that's, that's what I do. And when you find closers, how do you know they're good? Truth is you won't know until you give them an opportunity. However, if you know that they have gone through some type of training or you can role play with them and see, hey, you know what, role play with me. I, I am, I, I have this guy product, sell to me, right? Sell me my program. I wanna see how you talk to my prospect. Give them different objections and see how they handle those objections, how they ask questions. Do they sound very uh, like a typical salesperson? Because one of the things you have to consider is, it's not just that they closing sales and making sales for you, that's one thing. However, another thing you must pay very close attention is, for those sales that they don't make, are they pissing off the customers? Are they ruining your reputation, right? You don't want your best customer, especially selling high ticket, get off the phone with one of your closers and they feel like, oh my God, I can't believe I just talked to this like slimy salesperson, try to twist my arm, force me to buy this and that. Suddenly, now the salesperson it's ruining your reputation and relationship with the customers without you knowing it. So whoever the closer that's closing for you, you need to have that talk with them. Okay, this is, what is your philosophy? Are you about, you know what, I want you to get as much money as you could, close as many people as you could, I don't care, like kind of Wolf of Wall Street kind of angle, right? Just get the money? Or are you the kind of CEO entrepreneur and say, hey, I want you to offer my service, my solution to the customer if only it's a good fit. If it's not a good fit, it's okay. Don't, you don't need to like force them. I don't want them to get off the phone feeling that they need a shower, right? I don't want them to get off the phone and never want to hear from us again, right? Now you just, you burn the relationship. So what is your personal philosophy? That's very key, right? So in terms of what I do when, when people call me the king of high ticket sales, not necessary because I'm the greatest closer that ever walk on this planet Earth. No, what is a king without the kingdom, right? And what's a kingdom without people? So I'm called a king of high ticket sales, not because just my skill, it's because I have access to high ticket closers than any more access than anyone else in the world. I have more influence 
to hide the closest to anyone else in the world. That's what makes the kingdom and what makes the king. That's the difference. If you have got a funnel, you've got a quality product and service, and that's high ticket, and if you're looking for closers, I have access to closers, so you can book a time with one of my leaders who manages all my closers to see if it's a good fit and to see if I have closers that would understand your offer, maybe have a little bit of experience in terms of closing in your industry. I'm more than happy to make that recommendation. There's no charge because that's how I work. That's how my closers work. They don't get paid until they close a sale, right? So I'm more than happy to, to make that introduction. Uh, and, and that's what we do because the, I believe when you're working with a client, when you're working with a company, a CEO, an influencer, it should be, the relationship should be the more successful that you are, the more successful that the, the closers are, right? That's what I want to do. I want to provide opportunities, earning opportunities, uh, good potential programs for my closers to close. That's what, what we do. That's what drives me. So if you've got something like that, more than happy to set up a time to talk to one of my leaders and see how we can help. In order to scale, you need to think of a, of a triangle. You need three things, three things only. You need a scalable offer, which is an offer that you can deliver to massive amount of people without more infrastructure, right? A scalable offer. Maybe it's a software, maybe it's, it's a digital product. It's something that doesn't matter if you sell to one person or 10,000 people, your work is essentially the same. You need a scalable offer. And then you need a consistent lead flow. I don't care how you get it, it could be through social media, it could be Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, however you want to do it, pay-per-click, or even infomercial, doesn't matter. But consistent lead flow, and then you need closers that can close. You have those three things, you can scale. You need all those three things, but you need to have the offer dialed in, you need to have your, your traffic source, your lead flow dialed in, then this, Every time, every single time you add a new closer, it adds another 100, 200, 300, 400 thousand dollars to your revenue. You just keep adding that, and you take a lot of profit. We invest back to that lead source, so you scale, and so you get more leads, and then you hire more closers. You get more leads, you hire more closers. Before you know it, you've got a pretty, pretty decent-sized business, right?